and very often bring their accents with them when they go to Congress. Beyond that, though, there are those individuals for whom the standard dominant dialect is not native, even though English is native, and here you see people from different racial backgrounds being uh, part of those groups. The mountain people in the hills of Appalachia um, have just as much, uh, have as many non-standard features as many of the slave descendants, slave descendants that speak African American vernacular English, and the vast majority of citizens within the United States retrace their linguistic ancestry to the bottom line, which is to people for whom English was not their native language. So when we think about this in an educational context, when we're looking at the linguistic composition of communities or classrooms, one of the things that I experienced here in the Los Angeles public schools where I grew up is when I lived at Crenshaw and Jefferson, my school looked very much like the third line where it was a combination of English language learners and language minority students. And in fact, there's going to be a forthcoming volume on the linguistic evolution of uh, California where I dug up a picture of my fourth grade class and the only white person is the teacher. All right. So Sixth Avenue Street School, when I went there in 1958, was composed of a class that was about 50% African American, 48% uh, Asian American, and 2% Mexican American. And um, that linguistic diversity went away when I moved out to the San Fernando Valley and in that situation, the only African-American student in the class was me, all right? And so I went through a tremendous demographic uh, transformation, in addition to which I was then exposed to standard English among my playmates for the first time. I should mention that both of my parents had PhDs, um, so I was very fortunate being raised in a well-educated household where my mother was an elementary school teacher, my father worked for Hughes Aircraft Company, in fact, my father made a discovery that uh, today is still a groundbreaking contribution to color TV. So back in 1953, he discovered something that got a patent for RCA. RCA made millions, he made thousands. And, and, and with that money, we moved from Philadelphia, where it snowed, to Los Angeles, where it doesn't. And uh, we were very, very fortunate. Hello. Uh, yes. Can I ask a few questions about the apartment on Park Street? What was your name? My name, uh, my name is Juan Hernandez. Hernandez. Oh, he's gone. Hello, my name is Sanjay Kumar. I am calling about the apartment on Park Street. It's not available. Not available? Hello, my name is Tyrone Washington. I'm calling about the apartment on Park Street. It's been Hello, I am Chen Yi. My name is Khalid Bin Ali. I'm Tuan Vo. Hello, my name is Moshe Goldberg. I use a wheelchair. It's gone. Not available. All right. Thank you. Yes, hello. My name is Graham Wellington. I'm calling about the apartment for rent on Park Street. Is that still available? Yes, it is. What oh, is? Yeah. Really? Housing discrimination is illegal. If you think you've been a victim because of your race, color, national origin, sex, religion, disability, or family status, call us. Fair housing. It's not an option. It's the law. I'd like to take a moment and ask if there are any comments or observations that anyone would like to make about that commercial. Um, it clearly was trying to illustrate that depending upon the nature of your speech, you may or may not have success at obtaining some of the goods and services that you see. But I don't know if anybody here has ever encountered uh, a, a situation similar to what was depicted there, or if that illustration triggers any comments or thoughts on topics regarding linguistic discrimination. Anybody? Okay. Yes, ma'am. It's disembodied from race. It's disembodied from race. It's disembodied from race, right. So the, all of the illustrations that are presented in that in that particular commercial are disembodied from race because clearly the same individual is producing the dialect. But you'll recall that this morning, uh, Vice Chancellor Mitchell Kernan made an observation about Match Guy's research that had been produced in Canada by Wallace Lambert. That particular research paradigm worked very effectively in that environment because he was working with French and English 
and was specifically working with individuals that were characterized as balanced bilinguals. A balanced bilingual under ideal circumstances is one who can produce a monolingual rendition of either language and do it in such a way that native speakers of either language perceive that monolingual rendition as near native speech if not native speech. Being a balanced bidialectal is a little bit more complicated because you're shifting within the same language, you're not using a completely different language. And so to produce an impeccable variety of a dialect that's other than your native vernacular is, is, has nuances that are quite different and subtle uh, in comparison to a bilingual situation. And then there are the additional phonological components as well. Now, whereas the first commercial that you saw, which won an award in 2002, it received the uh, uh, National Award for the Public Service of, of the Year announcement. Um, it was based on research that I did, but they didn't consult me in advance of doing the commercial. And when the commercial first came out, um, I looked at it and I shrugged and I said, you know, this really makes no sense because when people want the apartment, if they have any linguistic dexterity at all, they don't use their vernacular dialect initially, they try to use their most formal variety because they're, they're trying to pursue those goods and services. And so the Madison Avenue people, you know, they just kind of shook their heads and they said, you know, you academics are all alike, you don't get it, we only have 60 seconds to present <laughs> all of your evidence, right? We don't have the luxury of spending three months to write an article and have all of the nuances. We've got to be able to, to have something that's catchy, that's entertaining, that's, that you know, captures the imagination. And, 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 and in fact, I feel that they have done that in that particular commercial. But one of the things that's very important to note is that the race of the speaker does not change. Compare that to this situation. <laughs> 